Okay. So, an example of of a synchronous counter is shown here, all right? So you can have uh, these, these four flip-flops. So this is a four-bit counter uh, without this part. We added this part because that helps us to create uh, synchronous, sorry, to create counters okay. whose mod is less than two to power n. Uh, whose mode is less than 2 to power n. So if you have a 4-bit counter, it would essentially count from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. But now you see when you have, this is obviously D, C, B, A. Uh, D, C, B, A, when it goes to 1, 1, 1, 0, all right, when it goes to that, it clears. What happens is that you have DCB as 111 uh, going through this NAND gate, making this NAND gate output zero, and that zero goes into the active low clear inputs uh, of the flip flops, clearing everything back to 0000. So we called this a temporary state. And if you have 1110, that means that the last state. Um, the last state of the counter is the previous state of this temporary uh, state, which would be maybe one, one, I think zero, one. Yeah, I think that's the one. So uh, I think this is uh, eight, four, and uh, one. What is that, 12 of 13? Is that a mod 13 or mod 14? I don't remember. Yeah, it is uh, decimal 13. This is decimal 13, which is the last state of the counter, uh, but the mod number is 14. We need to remember that a, a mod 16 counter counts up to decimal 15, okay? So that if this one stops at decimal 13, those are just two states before uh, the terminal state. And instead of mod 16, we remove two and we remain with mod 14. So we finished all of this. Uh, today, I want to start on some other counters. Uh, there is a, a counter that is presetable. Uh, most of the counters do not have to be presetable, but sometimes you may want to set a counter to start at a certain state, okay? So, so that you're not setting always at 0, 0, uh, 0, 0. You may choose to start at 1, 1, 0, 0. In this case, this is um, technically a mod 8 counter. Uh, synchronous. I think you can see uh, that the clock signal uh, is the same. It comes from uh, this one, you know, from the same source, clocking all these flip-flops at the same time. So this makes this a synchronous counter. We already know how to do a synchronous counter with the AND gates. Now what we have added, the circuit that has been added around this is one that allows uh, presetting. Uh, presetting is, as I've said, a way that allows you to set a certain state of the counter, and then you can start counting. You can set it to 111, you can set it to 101, whichever state you want, you can still be able to start at that state. Uh, another advantage of this actually is that every time you set, you switch off your counter, you switch on your counter, for instance, there's no guarantee that it will always start in 000, so that you know, okay, Initial, I've set it off and I'm starting from 000, zero, zero because of the noise on the, on the wires and whatever not, you could find that when you first switch on your counter, instead of 000, zero, zero, it's like 010 zero, zero, or 101 zero, or whatever other state. Now, if you start counting from this state thinking you are starting from 00, zero you are in trouble. So this presetting also allows you to ensure that your state, the beginning state is 000, zero, zero. meaning that when you first switch on your counter, you can preset it to 000. Even if it was 000, you can still preset it to the same state just to be sure, you know, to guarantee that you're starting uh, at 000. So, uh, sorry. So let us see how this one works. Uh, okay, uh, we are here. Now we can see, oh, presetting is also called parallel loading. Uh, parallel loading. 
parallel loading, you're loading um, uh, states into the flip-flop, but you're doing them in parallel. So you're going to load something in this one, in that one, and in that one, all at the same time. That makes it uh, parallel loading, as opposed to, for instance, serial, where you would have to shift uh, a, the, the states one at a time uh, through the uh, through the counter. But this is parallel preset, uh, parallel loading or, or presetting uh, a counter and it happens uh, synchronously. So let us look, what happens is that you have these NAND gates, you have a NAND gate going into each, into the preset. Uh, this is the preset input. And so if you want to preset, you can see that this preset input is active law. All right. So if you want to preset a counter, you make sure that uh, that, uh, that, that is active law, obviously. So make sure that the input going in here is, is, is essentially active law. And when you want to clear, clear is also an active law uh, input, uh, meaning, that, um, uh, meaning that if you want to clear, once again, you have to feed a zero uh, going into uh, that. So we are going to look at some uh, examples. Let me first make a copy of this. Uh, and so what we have done really is that, uh, how can I write? Okay, oops, I don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. Now I can, now I've cleared that, all right. So, so what we want to see is we have added a NAND gates and here we have added NAND gates. We still have our clock clocking all of these synchronously and we have a parallel load input, meaning that this parallel load input is active low. It is usually high, it goes low when we want to parallel load or when we want to preset the counter and then it will go back high. And so we only put it low when we want to parallel load. So let us look at some examples. We can see on this side, first of all, if you remember how an AND gate works, it is A, B and output 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. And so when it's 0, 0, you have a 1, otherwise, you have a one here, you have a one here, otherwise you have a zero. Irukat Musa, I don't know. I don't know why Irukat Musa is even here. It's like a name I've known for 10 years. I... Oh, I should, oh, okay, mute all, allow participants. Ah, okay, fantastic. I didn't know that, thank you. Um, thank you for that advice. Let me see. Um, yeah, Arvin, yes, Arvin Kimboa. Thank you for uh, the advice. I've unmuted you all and uh, you cannot unmute yourselves uh, for, for that matter. Okay. Now, if we want to preset, we can see that we are looking at what's going into that. And that is uh, P2, for instance, if we look at this arm of the counter first, that is P2 and or NAND, I should put the NAND sign. We have an input that comes from down here, okay? So PL, uh, when, it, when we are here, we are going to be low, PL dash, but then we, at this point, it is actually PL, right? Uh, down here, it is the inverse, but it has been inverted. So we can say PL. And if we want to clear, uh, clear, we have another NAND gate now moving into here. In this case, it will be uh, P2, but P2 has been inverted and once again, uh, PL, okay? So that, that is PL. So now let us say that we, we, we want to maybe, let's assume, um, yes, 
let us assume assume that P2, we want to see how can we preset or how can we clear. Let us assume that P2 is a one, okay? Now, for us to preset or clear, obviously, PR bar will also be zero, okay? Now, in this case, this is what we have. We have P2 as a one and PR as a one. That is going through the NAND gate, which makes that uh, a zero, okay? And uh, when, when we make that a zero, what does that mean? Does that mean we preset? Hmm. I need to explain this uh, in another way. Yeah, the output going into, into that is going to be hmm, interesting. Let me just think about it some more. I want to clear we have a zero. Yeah, we have. Hmm. Let us redo this so that we can get it. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, let's just restart this uh, this time uh, slowly. So we can see that for us to preset or pre here, or maybe I can call this, uh, let me call this P. Yeah, let me call that P. And I can then say that P is equal to, or it's actually active law. It is equal to P2. And uh, the other input, this input comes from, uh, it is PL, uh, but it is an AND gate. I don't know, uh, okay, so that is that. And if we look at this one, and I can call it Q, uh, Q is equal to, once again, PL and P2 with a bar, because the other input is actually P2 with a bar, once again, Anded. Okay, so we know that P is preset and Q is clear. Now let's assume that P2 is equal to zero and we have um, a preset, we have preset at zero, meaning that we want to preset. What happens? Q will now be zero. Uh, inverse and PL, which is a one, because P, PL bar, you know, uh, PL bar is a zero at this point. That's a zero, so over here it becomes a one. Uh, we have an AND, which is uh, one and one, NANDed, uh, which will give us a zero. Okay, now when we get a zero, uh, we have a zero here, meaning that the, this, this flip-flop is cleared. And if the flop, this flip-flop is cleared, then its state, uh, its so-called state Q2 will be zero. But Q2 is the same as, you know, 
it means that we have set, we have sort of preset P2 is equal to zero by clearing, because if we want to set a flip-flop to show zero, we might as well just clear it. Let us look at an example. What if P2 was one? If P2 was one, we want to, to make, we want, meaning that we want Q2 is equal to one. Uh, that means that um, our Q, you know, this one, okay? Our Q will be equal to, uh, now P2 is one, so one bar and zero with another bar, ah, and one, sorry, which is equal to zero and one with a bar. And from our table, we know that zero and one gives us a one. And if we have a one here, we cannot clear. Right, let us see what actually preset is. What is P? Uh, P is equal to uh, P2, as we saw earlier. Now I'm looking at this one. P2, which we have said is a one, and PL, which is a one, nanded together. One and a one, we know that is a zero. And if P2, if P here is equal to zero, it means that uh, the preset is now active. And the, the, when the preset input is active, we, it means we are setting that flip-flop high, meaning that now Q2 can become one. Okay, so these are the two examples. And obviously this works for the other uh, flip-flops as well, uh, that when we want to preset a flip-flop to zero, we clear it. And when we want to preset a flip-flop to one, Obviously we don't clear, but what happens is that the preset input is active low. Preset input is active low. And so we have seen that P is equal to zero and the effect of this is to set the uh, flip-flop uh, to a high state, okay? This is why we, the reason, the main reason why we preset once again is to guarantee that we are in the state that we want to start our counting in and that could be zero, zero, zero or any other state. Right. Otherwise, we would not be able to uh, guarantee that. Sometimes for some functions, you may want to jump some, uh, to reach a certain state, for instance, and uh, between a number of states, you may want to give off a high ETC. There are many reasons why you might want to preset, or you may want to reach a state like a 111 or 101, and then um, after that, you preset to a higher state or a lower state. You could do that. So for instance, you could, you could uh, set your flip-flop to, to say, okay, you may have a mode 16 counter, you want to create a mode 10 counter, and you say that whenever you reach the mode 10 state, you preset back to zero, okay? You could do that. So you can artificially create a mode 10 counter out of a mode 16 counter, something like that, without uh, using the other method that we saw earlier. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Otherwise, uh, I will continue. Uh, okay. Now we do have some ICs. Most of these things that we have seen are actually essentially ICs. They are embedded uh, within uh, some substrate to create an IC. We have some interesting ICs here. Uh, they, they, they are common uh, the 160 to 163 series. So this is 160, 161, 162, and 163. And these can be both CMOS and they can also be TTL, transistor, transistor logic. Uh, some of these, two of these, uh, obviously both CMOS and TTL have the same series, 160 to 163. They do essentially the same functions, but obviously based on different uh, technologies. I, I cannot repeat because I saw you coming in late. So I imagine that you missed it, but I'm recording this. So uh, you'll be able to see from, uh, from the videos. Um, uh, you can go back to that explanation. Now, we do have a few things that I want to talk about here. These are essentially synchronous. Some of the uh, points that we can look at is that the clock is PGT. Okay, so obviously this is synchronous. It works with a clock and here the clock is um, a positive uh, transition. We know that the clear active law, we can see the bubble and it overrides. By overriding is that 
whatever other inputs you have set, as long as you put the clear input, you know, you make it zero, then it will clear the flip-flop. Only that here, I think for some of these, it is synchronous clear, for others it is asynchronous clear. If it is asynchronous clear, it means that the moment the clear input goes low, then you clear immediately. You don't wait for the clock. If it is synchronous clear, then obviously you can set your clear input to zero, but you will still wait for uh, the positive going transition of the clock. Uh, the other one is the load. Uh, this is the same as the parallel load that we have seen. It is also active low, but it is not, it does not override uh, the clear, but it might override uh, some other things. So you can uh, load, uh, a load essentially is synchronous. It is synchronous. It cannot be asynchronous. It is already synchronous. And so once you put your load inputs and you give a zero input at the load, uh, a zero here. So for instance, let us look at this case. If your clear is high, because if clear is low, then you can't load. Because if clear is low, then you just keep clearing. So clear needs to be high. And once your load is low, it doesn't matter what is at these two inputs. However, you need a, a clock. So because it is a synchronous, it is a, sorry, it's a synchronous operation. So you need this to be low and you need a clock and you can perform your synchronous load and all of these uh, flip-flops, oh, sorry, all of these counters work in the same way. For, for you, if you want to clear, First of all, the clear needs to be low. And as long as the clear is low, the other states don't matter. So we say, uh, we don't care. They are, you, we give them don't care states. The load could be zero or one, ENP could be one or zero, it doesn't matter. You don't even need the clock in the case of asynchronous. In this case of asynchronous, the moment clear goes low, you clear. But in the case of synchronous, you are low, your clear is low, but you will wait for um, a clock, a, a positive clock going transition of the clock. And this works for the asynchronous clear, you can see it's 160 and 161. Uh, for the synchronous clear, it's 162 and 163. Usually if I bring this, I will tell you, uh, I don't want you to cram, uh, to say that, oh, 160 and 161 are for asynchronous. I probably just stated somewhere within the question uh, uh, that you use synchronous, um, uh, synchronous uh, clear or asynchronous clear. Now, another point to note here is that in this case, if the clear is high, meaning it's inactive, and the load is inactive, and, and then ENP and ENT, we can see these two uh, active high. Now, both of, need, of them need to be high for you to count. Both of them need to be high for you to count. If any one of them is low, you cannot count. So usually they are added together, in fact. And so you have ENT and ENP, and these ones need to be uh, high, both of them high. You need the one here for you to be able to count up. As you can see in these cases, these conditions remain the same, but because ENP is, is low, you cannot count. It is no change. You just stay put within that state. If it is ENT that is low, but this is, it really doesn't matter what it is, as long as one of them is high. So this is low, and then once this is low, you don't care what that is, you cannot count. Once this is low, it, this could be high or low, it doesn't really matter. Once again, no change. But you don't clear, you stay within that state until both of them are high. And once again, it doesn't matter whether the clock signal comes or not, as long as one of those two inputs is low, you cannot um, count. Okay, let me see uh, what does ENP and you you read about this in the in the book, but they are just two inputs. Actually, uh, e, let me just say that ENT and ENP both should be high for you to count. Okay. And then uh, once we know that, there's another functionality that we need to know uh, about. Uh, OK. 
Okay, just a moment. Yes, the other one that we need to know about is that ENT controls RCO. RCO. In other words, ENT should be high uh, for RCO signal to go high. Actually, RCO, uh, this RC note shows the or RCO, shows the terminal state. Uh, terminal state of the counter. So for instance, for a three bit counter, terminal state is one, one, one. So what happens is that when you are counting, when you reach the state one, 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 RCO changes to high. RC note becomes high, otherwise it will always be low. But when you reach the terminal state, it goes high to show that actually that's the, the end of the counting range and we are going to clear back to uh, the start. Uh, now, for RC note or RCO to show a high, for it to actually go to a high, you must make sure that ENT is a high. We are going to see some uh, examples uh, of this. But so ENT, ENP, both of them control the counting. If both of them are high and uh, you're not clearing or loading, then you can count up. If one of them is low, it doesn't matter which one, what state the other one is it will not count, it will just stay put. Uh, then RC not shows the, count, the, the terminal state of the counter and it will usually go high during that state. If, however, for that to happen once again, ENT should also be high. If ENT is low, the RC not will not uh, show a high uh, output. Even when you are in the terminal state, as long as ENT is low, you will not get that RC not uh, uh, high output. Another thing is this. This is where we put our, our, our load inputs, our parallel load inputs. So if I want to load this thing with the one zero, one zero, I just hold those inputs to that state and I give the low load input or, or, or command and then I will load those things into the counter. When you load them into the counter, obviously they come here. As I told you, these are outputs, of course. As I told you, the state of a flip-flop is, st is the output value. Okay? So once I load, what I'm essentially doing is I'm moving these uh, to appear at the outputs. Those, that is the state. And so once I load, I just have a one, zero, one, uh, zero. Uh, but what you do is you put them with the input and then you give the load command and they will be shifted uh, to the output. Okay, so yeah, so we can see here that 160 and 162 are mode 10 counters or so-called um, uh, BCD counters in this case because there would be binary coded decimal counters as we, we are working with binary. Uh, but 161 and 163 are mode 16 counters, meaning they go through the whole uh, range, all right. Uh, please don't misuse the chat. Eh? You, you, we, if you have a question, you can type it in the chat and maybe I can answer it uh, uh, or not, uh, but don't type your own personal things. You know, we are on a public forum. People can see you, uh, we, we, we can see things. So uh, please be careful how you use uh, the chat function. Now let us look at an example. Now with this example, you really need to be very attentive because uh, you may not get it, okay? You may not get it. So we have our, our 163, uh, we have a 163 and we know that this is a mod uh, 16 as we have already seen here, okay? 163 is mod 16. Uh, and actually the one we've been given is now the HC. So it's the CMOS. Here we had the ALS. ALS is uh, typically, um, is, is TTL, 
okay, transistor, transistor logic. This is CMOS, but the point is that they work exactly the same. They have the same inputs, same outputs, and the functionality is the same. The reason why this is, is because of standards, okay? So much as you are different manufacturers or you are using different technologies, but there are standards that you must follow so that the consumer can choose whichever to buy and will still be able to obtain the same uh, functionalities. So we are assuming that the counter is initially in the state 0000. Maybe it has been preset, all right, as we saw earlier. And so now we want to determine the input waveform. We can see that obviously this, first of all, RC naught is zero. We say that RC naught will be zero until uh, the output is in the terminal state. So when, so for this one, for instance, it is a, a, a mode 16 counter. When it reaches one, 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 then RC naught will change to a high. And then once it cycles back to zero, 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 RC naught will go back to zero. Once again, there is an ENT, you know, requirement or consideration, but it's not in this example. So we expect this to be zero, 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 zero because we assumed that we are in the zero state. And as you can see, that's the case. Now you need to keep looking at these inputs. Clear should, for you to count, clear should be zero. No, no, clear should be one so that it's inactive. Load should be one so that we are not loading. ENT should be one and ENP should be one. Then we can count. Meaning that over this period, we are going to now go to uh, zero, zero, uh, zero, one, okay? Because we have counted to the next stage, we are counting to the next stage again, zero, zero, one, zero, okay? Because I'm looking here, I've not yet cleared or, or loaded or done, whatever. Then I can go to the fourth state, which is zero, zero, one, one. As we can see, uh, these are actually working out. We go to the next one, we are still counting, uh, in this clock, after this clock, we go to zero, one, zero, zero, okay? And in this point here, we are going to steer. Yes, we are clearing, but I'm looking at the transition of the clock, okay? So this is zero, one, zero, one. Now, at this point, we get a clear. What we need to determine is, is this asynchronous clear or is it synchronous clear? And we can go back here to see how the seven, four, ALS163 behaves, and we can see that it does synchronous clear, meaning that yes, there is a clear input, but we have got to wait for the clock, okay? And the clock happens at that point, all right? So here we would have counted to the next state, but because the clear is zero, it means we clear, meaning we go back to zero, 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 zero. Okay, we would have been going back basically to zero, one, one, zero. But instead we meet a clear input that is zero and at this point, that's where we clear. If it was a synchronous clear, we would have cleared at that point. But it is synchronous clear, so we clear after getting the clock. And now uh, at the next clock, clear is back to one. So we can again continue counting. We can say zero now, zero, zero, one. And we go to the next one, zero, zero, one, zero. And to the next one, the next one is at that point, at this point, we can go to zero, zero, one, one. But now for the next clock, there's a load command. A load command is, uh, is, is when load is zero because you can see that this is active law. Right, so instead of counting to the next state, we are going to load instead. And what are we loading? We are loading 1100, zero, zero, meaning that now D is one, C is one, B is zero, and A is zero. So from here, we have jumped to that state because we have been able to load a new state into the counter. And so now in the next step, we are going to count because you can see all these are one. This is one, that's one, and these are inactive in their one states. So we have one, one, uh, zero, one. That is our next step. In the next one, at this clock transition, we can count again, which is one, 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 uh, zero. 
And now here we can see that at, for this clock transition, ENP is a, is a zero. If one of these is a zero, we cannot count. We are going to stay in the same state. We don't clear, we, know, we just do no change. So we stay at one, 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 zero. In the next clock transition, ENP is back to one, but ENT is also zero. So we cannot count. We will just stay put, which is one, 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 zero. And then in the next one, all of them are back to one. That is at this point. All of them are back to one, meaning that we count to the next state, which is one, 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 one. And because this is the terminal state, RC not also will go back to one. And then you can see that we continue counting, but in this case, this is the terminal state, meaning we go back to zero, 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 zero. And so RC not will also go back to zero and so on and so forth. Um, Um, so, okay, I'm going, I, I'm told that there are some people who cannot follow me because I think my shared screen, my voice is ahead of my shared screen. I don't know what the lag is, but it may be uh, your internet, uh, perhaps. Uh, I don't think, you know, it is the lag to, to your internet. You may be having a bad internet connection. I don't know really how I can fix that. Um, but that's perhaps that's why we are recording so we can have a recorded uh, version. Um, yeah, but I hope for most others, it is fine. Now, uh, Erwin is asking, QA is the least significant bit. Yes, this is the case. How do you identify the LSB? Is it always at the bottom one? Well, you know, uh, based on nomenclature, on, our, on standard uh, nomenclature, usually A is the, so it can also depend on the naming. If you see A, usually that's the least significant bit. If you see D, that's usually the most significant bit. I think also here, it is uh, okay to assume uh, that the lower one is the, uh, LSB and the upper one is the MSB. If it is confusing, perhaps I'll have mentioned something about it. But usually if I'm, I'm setting a question, I can usually say that assume uh, that DCBA is 0000, zero, zero, zero initially, okay? So something like this then would show you clearly which one is the LSB and which one is the MSB. But yes, Uh, but yes, uh, I think these are, are good assumptions uh, on the on which one is the most significant bit and which one is the least significant bit. Okay, so since we have got that one, then this one will not be difficult, although it's supposed to be a bit more difficult. Once again, uh, okay, let's see. the loading state. Oh, okay, so somebody didn't get the loading state, so let me uh, repeat it briefly for them. Uh, so the loading state is when load is low, okay? When the load is low, because it is active low. And we know, what we know is that these don't matter, of course, it overrides them, but we know that the clear also overrides the load. So the load is the, like the second in command or in capability. Anyway, if we want to load, we put the load in the low state, we apply our inputs uh, on the load, uh, uh, the load inputs with D as your most significant bit, and we give a clock, meaning that it is synchronous load, and this means that all of these uh, operate in the same way. If we come to this point, we look for where the load is low. The load is low at this point. So basically at that point, we are still counting, which is why we moved from this state to the next state, which is 0011. But by the time the second clock, the next clock comes, this clock, it finds that the load is in the low state, all right? And so when the load is in the low state, it means that once you give the clock, the inputs at the loading, the, you know, the inputs at your load inputs are the input of the free flow of the, of the counter will be loaded into 
uh, the counter. Basically, it will be shifted to the output. So if this is 1100, zero, zero, it means that our output states are now 1100, uh, one, zero, zero, which is why now instead of going to the next counting state, for this clock pulse, I move to 1100 uh, zero, and 0. And so really, you read that, you read what is at the input and just put it uh, at the output. Obviously, remember that these waveforms are output waveforms. They are not, you know, they are on the output waveforms. And I say the output represents the state of the counter. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, so the load acts essentially the same as the clear. In this case, the clear, you know, because it is synchronous clear, you wait for the clock and clear everything back to zero. For the load, you wait for the synchronous clock and then you load whatever was at the input, you load it uh, to the output, which is one, one, zero, zero, and so on and so forth. Right. Let's look at this one. Actually, this one works essentially the same way, uh, but I'm uh, maybe I'll, I'll just, con I, I will explain this one as well for, for those who didn't understand the last one. So we are looking once again for where the clear goes low and where the load goes low and where these ones go low because these ones should be always high. If we want to count, these should be inactive and these should be active, meaning that they are high. And so if we assume that this is, uh, let me say, uh, okay. Let's say that this is zero, 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 zero. That is in our initial state. We, are, we have not seen anything here, so we are going to go to the next state. These are the conditions for counting. We are going to say zero, 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 one, and we are going to go into zero, zero, one, zero. And then the next one, at this point, we still at this clock, we still don't have anything. So we can say zero, zero, one, one. Unfortunately, here we get this is one six zero. So we have a synchronous clear. A synchronous clear means that the moment you get a clear input, you clear immediately. So uh, we are not going to wait for the clock, we are going to clear at this point. And so you can see that we, in this point, it is zero, zero, back to zero. Everything is zero, 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 zero. When the clock comes in, the clear input is still active. So we are going to say, we are going to remain in the clear state, which is zero, zero, zero. When the next clock comes in, the clear input is no longer there, meaning that we are going to count, which is zero, 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 one. And then at the next clock, once again, there is no, in this range, once again, it is one, 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 meaning our next state is now a count, which is zero, zero, one, zero, which is the next count from here. But now when the next clock comes, our ENP is zero, right? So because ENP is zero, we cannot count. We are going to keep there. Uh, we will not count. So we stay at zero, zero, one, zero. And then when the next clock comes in, ENP is back to one, so we can count, which is zero, zero, one, one. Here in this range, we still count, okay? Because clearly you can see that's one, 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 one. So we have zero, zero, uh, uh, zero, one, zero, zero. That's the next step. Then when the next clock comes, we count again, zero, one, zero, one, which is the next step. Now, when this clock comes, it finds that the load state is in a row, okay? Meaning that we are going to load. This is a loading command, and we are going to load 0, 1, 1, 1. We are going to load uh, 0, 1, 1, 1. Remember, this is a mod 10 counter. So, at this point, when this clock comes, uh, ENT is a 0 meaning that we are going to stay put, which is zero, one, one, one. Because if ENT is a zero or ENP is a zero, we cannot count. So at this clock, okay, we can see everything is back to one, so we can count, which is one, zero, zero, zero. And then at the next clock, by the way, this is, uh, okay. So the terminal state of this is actually, uh, 
because this is mod 10, we are looking for 1001. This is decimal nine. And at this clock, we once again have ones all through, so we can count again, which is one, zero, zero, one. And because this is the terminal state of the counter, the RC note also goes high, okay? At this point, RC note goes high. At the next clock, where we should be circling back to zero, 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 zero. Where we should be, we find that ENP is a zero. And when ENP is a zero, we cannot count. So we really can't recycle back to zero, zero, zero. Meaning we are going to stay at, uh, at one, zero, zero, one. However, now this is the interesting part. At, at, at the next, at some point, ENP, ENT goes to zero. We said that RC note is high only if ENT is high. The moment ENT goes to zero, RC note will also go zero. And so you can see that while ENT is zero, RC note also actually, much as we are still in the terminal state, RC note also goes to zero. Okay. Uh, ENT goes back to one. RC note also now continues to show. Uh, goes back to high, and then at this count, we find that everything is one, 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 meaning that we can go back to zero. So this is zero, 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 and RC note also go back, goes back to zero. Okay, so that's essentially how that works. Mm. Uh, Godfrey, Gatonia, uh, the reason why we didn't wait for the clock is because this uh, 74HC160 is an asynchronous clear, uh, uh, whatever, uh, counter. You can see that um, in this case, which, which ones are asynchronous clear? They are 160 and 161. And so if we come back here, you can see that when we get the clear input, which is at this point, the moment clear goes low, at that point, we clear everything. We don't wait uh, for the clock because we are doing asynchronous uh, clear. Okay. All right. Very good. So let's take a, a quick break of about five or eight minutes and I'll be back with you uh, shortly, okay? Just take a quick break. You don't have to leave the chat, you can stay here.
Okay, Ivan, uh, I see your question. In the previous example, I thought the terminal state is when the output is one, 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 one. Uh, but at clock seven, T7, the, the RC note went to zero. So once again, as you can see, this is a, a 74HC160, which is a BCD counter. It is a decimal uh, counter. How we know that is that uh, we can go to here and you'll notice here in this little table uh, that the mode of the 160, 160 is 10. All right. So that means that its terminal state is actually 1, 0, um, 0, 1. This is equal to decimal 9. And so if we notice here, this is 1, 0, 0, 0, which is the, this, the, the previous state. And this is 1, 0, 0, 1, which is the terminal state making RC not uh, go high. OK, so, uh, so that I'm sure uh, explains it. Now, we want to move on and go to this. This is a way we can cascade counters. So we have two counters here side by side, and these are the 163 counters. So they are mod, uh, each of them is mod 16. Uh, but because each is mod 16, that means that maybe we have, and I think you can see that our outputs are Q7, Q6, Q5, Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0, okay? So this is one counter that has, can move from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is another counter that can move from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. So individually, they are both mode 16. But when we cascade them or, or when we connect them together in this way, we now can move from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is four. This is when the, all the states are, all the flip flops are zero, zero, all the way to when all of them are one, one. And these are uh, two to power eight, which is actually 256. So we create a mod 256. That means we can count 256 unique states. And the terminal state of this in decimal is obviously 255. Uh, five. OK. Now I want to actually create a couple of, of these. Uh, okay, because it looks like the explanation will be quite involved. Right. So if we look at this one, once again, we can see that we have our clock. The clock is clocking both. So when we want to count these to create one counter, one large counter, we once again use the same clock source at clock both of the flip-flops. The one to my left is the lower significant flip-flop, okay, something like that, or stage. And this is the more significant stage, so to speak, okay? So this is, as you can see, this is QD to QA, and this is, hmm, no, no. As you can see, this is Q3 to Q0, and this is Q7. Q4. So if I have my Q7, Q6, let me use this one. I have Q7, Q6, Q5, Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. All right. That means that my first, when I start counting, this goes to one and the rest is still obviously zero and it will continue counting in that fashion. That means for a long time, these flip-flops will be 0, 0, 0, 0, because you can see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. This is my first state. The ones will continue increasing in that direction, eventually reaching everything 1, 1, 1, 1. We know how, uh, how binary counting works. The other thing that they've done here is to say that ENP is always 1. We know that ENP is always one if we want to count. However, ENT is called EN here. And when we want to count, we want it to be 
one. But if we want, for instance, deal, you know, control the RC node, then we can make it zero. And we can also, if we want to stop counting, but keep it at that state, we can also make it zero. So ENT, uh, which is represented by E, N uh, can be either zero or one. However, EN is like enable. It's really like an enable input or oh, it enables counting or disables counting. Uh, if you set it to zero, it will enable disable counting. If you set it to one, it will enable counting. The other thing we do is that we can connect our clear input to both flip-flops so that if we are clearing, we are clearing everything. Remember, these are not two stages. This is uh, the, same free, the same counter just made up of two. So if you are going to clear your counter, clear everything. And if you are going to parallel load, you can load the whole counter. You don't just load half of the counter, you load the whole counter. And the, what you load into the least significant side is put here, D3, D2, D1, D0, and D7, D6, D5, D4. The ones you want to load in the second stage or in the most significant stage, you will put them uh, at that point. All right. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, so we've basically seen a couple of points. E ENP is held high. ENT is given either an input zero or one, depending on what you want to do. So it can help you to enable or disable the counting. Clear, we clear both flip flops, sorry, both counters at the same time or both stages of the same counter synchronously or we load them also synchronously we cannot load half of it we can we have to load both of them now actually the thing that we had not yet seen okay so this is called enable uh, four bits together uh, a four bit word is enable and this is the less significant nibble and that's the most significant uh, nibble okay msn what we had not seen before is that rc not is connected to the ENT of the next stage. So the next stage is not connected with some output. Actually, what comes of the RC node is what connects to that one. And if we had another stage here, it would look essentially the same, but now this RC node would go into its ENT. We are going to see uh, in a moment why this is the case. But let us look at how this might operate. So I have Q7, Q6, Q5, Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1, and Q0. And uh, I'm going to assume that initially everything is zero, zero, everything is cleared, right? Now, uh, obviously this is initially, uh, this is the clock pulse and so on. This is before the first clock pulse. After the first clock pulse, what happens is that you can see uh, or, or, or basically make sure that clear is equal to load, which is one. We can already see that ENP is one. So all we need to make sure is that EN is also one. If EN is one, this thing is going to count. And so we are going to have zero, 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 one. This is for stage one. What happens for stage four? The problem with stage four is that stage one hasn't reached its terminal state. In this state, if you have here, zero, 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 one, it means RC naught is zero. And if RC naught is zero, then this ENT is zero, which makes this it is not going to count. It will stay in the same state, which is zero, 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 zero. After the second clock pulse, we count again on this side, which is zero, one, zero. However, this still doesn't give on RC not as, as high, meaning that this will still not count stage two and will stay at zero, 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 zero because an ENT is still zero. Now let us go all the way to a stage where now we have um one 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 this is now uh down here what happens obviously this will still be i don't know maybe this is uh, 
the 16th clock no, or, or the 15, uh, 15, I think it is 15, is when you get 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, at this point, RC naught is equal to 1. That means that when we next count, because RC naught is equal to 1, now ENT is also 1, because you can see RC naught is the one connecting to ENT, which means that this stage is going to count once. It will count to 0, 0, 0, 1. But obviously now, in the, in, this one has cleared back to 0, 0, 0, 0, because it had already reached its terminal state. So on the 17th pulse, RS, because this is now 0, 0, 0, 0, RC naught goes back to 0 meaning that this will count, but this will stay put, 0, 0, 0, 1. It will now count again the time that this one reaches back its terminal state, which is 1, 1, 1, meaning that you will have 0, 0, 0, 1. But in the next stage, RC naught will still be 1, meaning that you have another count here, 0, 0, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. So you can see that, Basically, stage one, stage one goes through a full cycle, a full counting cycle before stage two makes one count, okay? Makes one count. So you can see that every time that stage one needs to reach its terminal state and then stage two just jumps once. And then stage one goes through back the same cycle in its terminal state at its terminal state, stage two will jump the next step. And then stage one goes back through another full cycle, stage two goes through uh, one step, and so on and so forth. Eventually, by the time you reach to your 255 clock, at the 255th pulse, you are going to find that Q7 to Q0 is all 111111111. And at that point, you have come, and then, and then obviously everything now will clear uh, back to zero uh, because that is the, the terminal state of, 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 because obviously this would have been 1111 while this is counting through a cycle. The moment it reaches 1111, meaning that in the next clock, each of these now counts once. This would go back to zero, zero, but also that one would go back uh, to zero, 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 okay. So quite interesting, but you should take a closer look at it. You should take a closer look at it when you are doing your own revision to understand clearly how it counts. I surely wouldn't bring this the way it is, but I could redraw this to create like a two, a two bit counter that probably <laughs> that probably doesn't exist but here we want to see if you can you you understand what you're doing so i could create a two bit a, a two stage counter uh, a two stage counter no no two bit counter and i tell you to combine uh, the two stages how would that work for instance if it was two stage it means that maybe we have uh, Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1. And obviously we would be having DC for the upper stage and BA uh, for the lower stage. <coughs> Excuse me. So everything is initially cleared. And now uh, everything would, we would go through uh, 00, 01, 10, 11. And at this point, RC naught becomes equivalent to one. Because RC naught now is equivalent to one, ENT is also one, meaning that this side we will count once, which becomes zero one uh -uh, in the next stage. Uh, this is still zero zero. It's in the next stage when we have zero one, but now this one counts back to zero zero. This means these were all zero zero. And then this will count again go through 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. At this point, we have RC naught is equal to 1. It means this would have been 
constant because you cannot count when RC0 is zero. It means that in the next stage, this one will count once, which is one, zero, and this obviously goes back to zero, zero. We'll count through zero, one, one, zero, one, one, Another stage at this RC note is one, and it means that this will count again. So it stays at one zero. In the next one, it will go to one one, and we will count uh, zero zero, obviously. Zero one, one zero, one one. At this point, this is still constant. Uh -huh. At this point, RC note is equal to one. And it means that now this will clear, but also this will count once more. And obviously, the next count takes it also back to zero, zero. So you can see that this would create a mode 16 counter. And this mode 16 counter operates exactly the same way that we would expect a normal mode 16 counter using one IC to count, much as we have combined uh, two ICs. So I think this probably, hopefully, makes uh, it that little bit easier for you to see. And obviously, I can, I can bring something like this, uh, where I'm looking at a, a two mode two, no, two mode four counters. A mode four counter has two uh, inputs. Right. Um, let us continue. If there are any questions, put, please put them in the chat. Now, sometimes we want to decode counters. And of course, to decode something, you use a decoder. And in our next chapter, we are going to look at decoders in more detail. But they look almost like this. Here we have a three-bit counter. And you can see that because it has an AND gate, it is a synchronous counter. And you can also tell from the fact that the clock uh, goes into the clock inputs of all of the flip-flops, meaning they are asynchronously. Now, what is decoding? Decoding means if I'm counting, how do I know the state of the counter? How, many, how do I know I've reached state seven? How do I know I've counted seven things, for instance? Uh, that is decoding the counter. Sometimes you want to know. Maybe you are counting something, and when you reach a point, you want to stop there. So you need to figure out a way to know that I'm at, I've counted three to five to seven. Like this, the way these money people work, you know, those money things uh, which count money. They keep counting. And if you want $100 and you are counting in $1 notes, after 100 notes, they stop there. If you are doing 50,000 notes and you want 5 million, they just get a band of 50,000 and they, they count 100 pieces of those and you know that is uh, 5 million. Uh, so <clears throat> you can see that that machine has a display. So that is decoding. Otherwise, the, 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 the operator would never know I've reached 1,000, 100 knots. Uh, how would they know? But there is that counter and the counting range, or, or sorry, the count the current count is displayed on that display. We can do the same, and as you can see here, you can count, and we are going to look at this and connect your BCD counter to some decoder that we call it, you can call it a display unit, but it's essentially a decoder. And usually it will use LEDs uh, to connect, uh, to tell you, you know, it will light up certain segments uh, that shows you the current count or the current state of the counter, right? So if we go back here, that is easy, but when you are counting large things, it can be a problem. Of course, the idea of the display is, is okay. Sometimes you can get your count here and you say, okay, here at count A, uh, I'm going to put an LED, okay? Uh, I don't know where it might look, something like that. So that if it's a high, I light. If it's a zero, it is off. And then I come to B, I put another LED, and I come to C, and I put another LED. This is the simple way of doing it. The problem with this is that you have to be looking at LEDs, and you see which one is lighting. If it's lighting, usually it's a high, 
And you see, it depends on how you have connected it. You, it can also write if you have a low. But let's take it that it writes when it's a high. And then you say, oh, if it, this is on, I have a one. This is off, I have a zero. This is on, I have a one. And then you work out, uh, you know, this works okay, of course. But if you're, you're having a thousand, a hundred LEDs in these large counters, then that is a problem. So we can use a decoder circuit. Uh, and this decoder circuit tells us the current state of the decoder. So for instance, you can use AND gates. We have a, 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 a sort of a chain of AND gates, okay? And each AND gate is given a certain unique input. Because we see we have A, okay, we have C, B, A. This is a three input counter. We have 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. We, when we are in this state, we want AND1 and gate 1 to write. When we are in this state, we want AND gate 2, AND gate 3, and so on, up to AND gate 8. We want AND gate 8 to, to light. How can we make sure that AND gate 1 lights when we have uh, when we have 0, 0, 0? It means that we get our AND gate. We need the one here. So it means we should put a C, B, and, and A. Okay, so that if this is zero and a zero and a zero, then we have a one and a one and a one, giving us a one. Note that this is the only AND gate that we write because all other states are different. So there is no other state that can write when this is a zero, zero, zero. Uh, so you, you can see that basically what this means, uh, this could have been drawn like this, where you have C and then you have uh, meaning that this is, uh, sorry, at this point it is C inverse. But what they have done is they have just said C inverse really. If we take an example of this one, for instance, this is AND gate six. We will know that we have an AND gate where we have C, uh, we have B and we have A because this is one zero one. And I think this is the one. Uh, C, B inverse A. Okay, I'm naming mine from one to eight. I could have said uh, zero, one, two, three, or the way to seven to, to, to remain consistent with what the book has done. So that means that when and get, sorry, when my state CBA is one, zero, one, this output will be a one and all of the others will be zero. So then I can see, oh, I know that when AND gets six or AND get five is lighting or, or, or is, is giving a high, this is my state. And so you can see that when the state is zero, 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 you have a high on ray here, all of, the, all of the others will be low in this state. If it is zero, zero, one, this is high, the others, are low and so on and so forth. And when it is uh, CBA is the terminal state is one, 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 this will be high and get seven, whereas all of the others uh, up here will be low. So that is one way of decoding, creating a decoder circuit that has, this is a mod eight counter. So you're looking at eight counts, sorry, eight, eight outputs and each output is unique from the others. And so it only uh, going to light or it's going to give a high output only when you have a unique set of inputs that make it a high. All of the other inputs will never make this particular one a high, uh, but obviously each input has an output that it makes high while all, all the others are low. This is how a decoder works, essentially. And we are going to look at decoders, I think chapter nine or, yeah, chapter nine. We are going to look at decoders, and but essentially this is how they work. 
Let's see uh, how many AND gates. How many AND gates are required to decode completely all the states of a mod 32 a binary counter? We have seen uh, that mod 8 requires 8 AND gates. Because each state is decoded by a unique AND gate since you're feeding it with unique inputs. Now that means here that we need, for a mod 32, we have uh, 32 AND gates. So that we have uh, E, D, C, B, A from 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 1, 1, 1, sorry, 1, 1, 1. And each of these needs its own AND gate. You have AND gate 0 to AND gate 31. So for 21, I don't know, what is 21? So 21, you have E, C, B, E, D, C, B, A. And we have, uh, I think this is a 1. And this is a 0 because we have 16 plus 4. Uh, I think this is a one, and that is a zero, and that is a one. Okay, so this is this decimal 21. You have 16 uh, plus four plus one. So <clears throat> for you to decode 21, you need to create an AND gate, and you feed it with E, you feed it with C, you feed it with A, and B should feed it with a zero, and and also D should feed it with a zero. So I think, what are the inputs to the gate that decodes for the count of 21? The inputs are basically E, D with an inverse, C, B with an inverse, or so to speak, uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, so to speak. Any questions? Okay, so this is called active high decoding. What does active high decoding? It means that the current state activates an AND gate that gives off a high. We can have active load uh, uh, decoding where we use an AND gates instead. So that means that the, the value would be low. Uh, it's just the opposite uh, of this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Another way that we can decode, once again, is by using a display. So we are probably, I'm going to give you some work where actually you should create groups for me. Uh, each five, you know the, the you know my, my rules about groups. No group should be more than five people. Um, where I'm going to give you some assignments and you may create a, a counter like this where you have uh, a display uh, and that display displays the, the, the state of the counter uh, at a given time. All right. Uh, do you have any questions? If there are no questions, uh, I, I need to move on to something else before we finish. Uh, before we finish, since there are no uh, outputs, sorry, there are no questions, let us go to something that we call a register. Integrated circuit registers. Now we know what registers are from our first year lectures, uh, but what they are essentially is, they are used for storage, it's a register, you know? A register is like a, a book where they use to write records. So in uh, digital communications registers, we use flip-flops. Each flip-flop stores one digit, so if we want to create a four bit, we want to create a four bit register, we use four flip flops, and each of these flip flops, flip, uh, four flip flops will store one bit, and so you can have a four bit register. So uh, essentially, that stores a nibble. Now registers are classified based on how in uh, data is input and output. If data is input in parallel, meaning that you have your four flip flops. Okay, three flip-flops. And data is input into these uh, simultaneously, then you have parallel 
in and if at the output it is output in parallel then you have parallel out so parallel in parallel out gives you a type of register uh, you could have your your uh, four, two flip flops so your your data is going in in parallel but it is coming out in series meaning that these are, are, are joined in a series uh, meaning that you have parallel in series out or serial out you could also have serial in parallel out or you could have parallel in uh, okay the, you could have serial in serial out meaning that you have your flip flops and they are connected in some way actually these are so called shift registers you have your data in and outside here you have your data out this is basically a serial register from first year where we were looking uh, at serial uh, registers. Let us look at an example. This is a parallel in, parallel out, and these are uh, 174 um, registers, 74LS174. So this is TTL, and HC is a CMOS type. So you can see here that because it is parallel in, we have an input going into each flip flop. D5 goes into that flip flop, D4 into that, all the way to D0 going into the D input of that flip flop. Uh, on the outside, it is still parallel, and you can see that each output goes outside on its own. There is no interconnection between these. Okay, the only interconnection is on the clear and maybe preset, but we usually, with registers, we don't preset because registers you're getting information from wherever and storing it. There is no need to state, set it because we are not going to count. Uh, the other thing we need to look at is the clock pulse, CP, uh, clock pulse. It is NGT into the flip-flops. It is NGT. But although this is a positive, you can see that it is uh, inverted to a negative. So if we want to get a pos this up here is positive, but it is inverted to an NGT running that. Another one is uh, MR, which is the master reset. Master reset means it clears everything. You can see that this is a zero here and that now, okay, it starts as a zero. At that point, it becomes one after the bubble. And then after the bubble again, it goes back to zero. So you could basically remove that because it is double inversion. <laughs> there is no uh, point of it in my opinion. However, this is the book. That's how it is. It doesn't change anything. The point is that if you want to master reset, you put a zero along this line and it will clear all these flip flops. However, and uh, so that means your master reset should work like this. It should usually be high until you want to master reset and put it back high. Its natural resting position or state is a high. It just goes to a zero to perform a certain function. Now this is the IC. This is how the symbol of the IC looks like. You have your inputs coming in. You can see that they are parallel, uh, D5 to D0. Actually, this is a, a six bit register uh, where you can where you can store six bits at the same time and your outputs are also parallel. They are going out. You have your master clock, which is active high. In this case, well, I think it's active low because of this stage, which is a double inversion and the master reset clearly, which is active low. All right, so that's all. So when you have your data D, 5d4 d3 d2 d1 and d0 equal to say 101100 all you need is to put it here 101100 apply a clock once you apply a clock your data will shift to 101 Zero, zero. By saying here, it's not that it's, you know, you can see that this data is right here. So it is essentially one, zero, one, one, zero, zero.
but obviously it exists along the whole line. So you can see that you insert data into the register and when you shift, okay, when you give it a clock transition, you shift it all uh, to its output, meaning that you have stored it there. If you don't push it out, that data will stay in those flip-flops. We are going to look at some modalities around that, you know, how long data can stay without being shifted or refreshed. Uh, but technically speaking, it will stay there until you want to, to get it out. Actually, registers are essentially how you store data on your hard disk. It is memory, so to speak. Um, a shift register allows you to store data within its memory. Now we have a question, uh, just before we close. Show how to connect the 174 so that it operates as a shift register, a serial shift register with the data shifting on each PGT of the clock pulse as follows. Serial input from five uh, to four, to three, to two, to one, and I think to zero. In other words, the serial data will enter at D5 and output at Q0, okay? So there is no uh, parallel input. What we are trying to do is to create a serial input, serial output out of this. So you feed your data in here, and instead of pushing it outside here, you connect it to that one, right? So that the data at this point on the next pulse, it will shift to there. Uh, this one, you connect it to that, that one, you connect it to this, this one, you connect it to that, and that you connect it here, so that now data can come out at the end of, of that, which is Q0. Uh, it would be like, um, if I put a one, the one comes here, what was here shifts there, what was here shifts there. That is the essential, that's essentially what a shift register uh, means. And you can see that in, if you use the IC, you have your input here. This is where your data comes in, usually starting with that one. You don't start with the MSP, you start with it. Uh, these are six, so let's say uh, one. You start with this one so that by the, you start with the one, zero, one, zero, one, one. You start with this one so that it can be pushed all the way to this one. By the end of your shifting, this one will be up here. The third one will be in there. The fourth one in here. The fifth one there. And the sixth one there. So that this stays your most significant bit. And you can see that Q5 is connected to D4, input D4. And output Q4 is connected to D3 all the way to our data coming out at Q0. So, so that is uh, essentially what that is. Uh, we have come to the end of our lecture. Um, Thanks for attending. About 75 to 80 people is not bad uh, given the circumstances. Uh, but I'm going to set up Muele, okay? Uh, just for your own purposes. I don't intend to use it a lot, but I'll give some quizzes and some tests on there. Um, I will also put these links on Muele, where you, a link on Muele where you can keep uh, downloading the, um, uh, the videos. Uh, so that you can rewatch them if you have to. But as you now use the book, and so please use the book. The importance uh, of attending the class is that you can know what I've taught. I don't ask something I've not taught. And there are so many things in the book that I jump. So it's important that you know exactly what I've taught because that's where uh, I'm going to uh, ask my questions from. Uh, thank you very much and uh, see you uh, on Wednesday.